Hey gang, hope you're doing okay this week. Last time we looked together at the discipline of solitude and today's talk is really a development of the same theme but it's not for the faint hearted. But if you've dared to come as far as the discipline of solitude, perhaps you'll take one step further and experience the discipline of silence. In 2017 I was going through a really tough time, probably the worst time in my life and I decided to put myself onto a retreat, a Christian retreat up at the Northumbria community. I was really looking forward to it. Space to meet with God and to reflect. I got the train or several trains all the way up to Northumbria and when I arrived to my horror I was told it was a silent retreat. No talking allowed for the whole five days, not even at meal times. The only time we got to speak was for an hour a day with our spiritual director. They encouraged us to write a journal during that week and most of what I've written in that journal is deeply personal but I just wanted to share a couple of excerpts with you. Day one. Met my spiritual director for the week. Seems like a nice enough chap. He set me the task of sitting with my eyes closed and praying the Jesus prayer over and over. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Doesn't sound too difficult. He suggested I start with five minutes, then later do 10 minutes, eventually work up to 20 minutes. I'm about to do the five minutes. And then there's a gap in my journal. Did two minutes and then realized my mind was elsewhere. Then there's another gap. Two minutes again. This is harder than it seems. Then there's another gap. Yeah, five minutes. Feel so pleased with myself. Then there's a gap. Two minutes again. <laughs> I never did manage the 10. Day three. The silence is deafening. This is worse than fasting from food. It's taken till day three to break through the facade and really examine my life. I'm not sure I want to look. Day four, I feel like I've lost all confidence in myself. I'm realizing how much I rely on using words to control the world around me. And yet I feel a peace about it. As though God has removed it for a time to remind me yet again that I am his child. Full stop. Without doing a single thing for him or a single thing to impress others. Day five. What a thing it is to just live simply. No rush, no deadlines, no phone, no watch. The silence is a tonic. I feel I'm being renewed by it. Well, I'll leave it there and happy to talk more about my experience if you'd like to know more. I've already recommended for this series uh, the classic book Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster, which you might like to buy. But almost everyone I know at the moment is recommending a new book by John Mark Comer called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I've ordered my copy, so you might like to do it too. I've referred each week in this little series to the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus says, go into your room, close the door, and talk to your father like this our father in heaven your name is holy may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven what does it mean on earth as it is in heaven what's prayer like in heaven well no one really knows but the book of revelation gives us a little glimpse. Chapters 1 to 3 are the introduction and then chapters 4 to 7 are a sort of elaborate ceremony to honour King Jesus. Mysteries are revealed, evil is vanquished and the intensity builds and builds as you read through those chapters as myriads of angels and archangels join with the multitudes from every nation and tribe and tongue and people worshipping the risen Christ. 
And the climax is chapter eight. And it says this in verse one, when at last the seventh seal was opened. What happens next? Anyone know? There was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Silence before God has power. John Bunyan, who wrote The Pilgrim's Progress, put it like this. In your prayer, better your heart without words than your words without heart. If you're into classical music, then you'll know that the rests in music are just as, as important as the notes. Without the rests, a symphony would lack all beauty and grace. The genius comes in the combination of the notes and the rests, the sound and the silence. You may have heard of the piece called Four Minutes, 33 Seconds by the great American avant-garde composer, John Cage. And do you know what it consists of? Well, if you said silence, then you're wrong. It's never played in silence. True, there are no notes whatsoever. The whole piece consists of one long rest. But it's not about silence. The point that Cage was making is that every time it's played, it gives his listeners four minutes and 33 seconds to listen to the birds outside, maybe a, a car driving past, maybe just the sound of your own breath. And so it means it's the only piece ever written in history where no two performances are ever the same. So why do we always surround ourselves with noise? I think part of it is cultural. We live in a noisy society. It's almost impossible to find peace and quiet these days. But I wonder whether it's also a little self-inflicted. I wonder whether there's part of us that's afraid of silence. It's certainly true of me when I started that silent retreat. But even in church, on a Sunday morning, even in a prayer meeting, we just fill the hour with sound, the sound of our own voices. And it kind of gives us the impression that we've met with God, even if we haven't. But silence before God doesn't allow us to think that we've met with God, even when we haven't. It forces us to still our heart and mind and soul and listen to God. Imagine you go to the doctor after lockdown's over and you say, oh, doc, I haven't spoken to you for so long. My, my heart still has an irregular beat and, and I've developed a bit of a lower back pain and my limbs got worse. And then you get up from the chair and say, oh, thanks, doc, and walk out. He, he would say, whoa, 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 just a minute. You've come to me and told me all your problems. Don't you want to hear what I have to say about it? And yet so often that's how we treat God. The prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 19 was absolutely burnt out in ministry. He felt shattered, and stressed, even suicidal. And he says to God, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. And what does God reply? He says, Elijah, go up on that mountain and I'll meet you there. Let's remind ourselves of what happened next. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, for the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. The old version of that last phrase was the sound of a still, small voice. But some scholars think that you could even translate it that God was in the sound of sheer silence. As King Solomon would write in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. There's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant and a time to uproot. There's a time to weep 
and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. There's a time to search, and a time to give up searching, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. Habakkuk picks up the theme in chapter 2 verse 20. The Lord is in his holy temple, so let the earth be silent before him. Sometimes that seems like the only appropriate response to a holy God, doesn't it? So when's the best time to start? Well, as with all the disciplines, the best time to start is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So you up for trying it? I mean, right now? Should we take some time of silence together? How about we just start with five minutes? Can you do that? Five minutes of silence? Maybe press pause and go to a, a quiet room if you're not in one. And then we're going to take five minutes of silence together. There's going to be some words on the screen so that we don't get distracted. Here goes.
How did you find that? Don't be too hard on yourself if you found it really difficult. These disciplines are like a muscle that grows stronger the more you use them. These talks are not meant to make us feel bad about our spiritual life, but to inspire us to delve deeper during this lockdown period into the things of God. As we close, I've asked my friend Jimmy Orr, who's a local pastor, to sing an old hymn over us. Thanks, Jimmy. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. We clothe us in our rightful minds, in pure lives thy service find in deeper reverence praise in deeper reverence praise oh Sabbath rest by gas Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters watching this video. I just pray, Lord, that you would bless them and keep them. I pray you'd make your face to shine upon them and be gracious to them. I pray, Lord, that if there's anything of fear in us, that your perfect love would cast out fear and we would dare to stop, switch off the noise, and allow you to invade the silence, to invade our hearts, to remind us of who you are, so that we can know again who we are. So Lord, we receive your love, we receive your grace over our lives, and we worship you. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.